Tell me when we're up, please. <laughs> You're ready. You can go. Okay, hello. Uh, I am Treya, and I've actually been running this game for a couple of years, but I didn't really start practicing it very, very seriously until now, and even then, I still have much to learn. So this is Freedom Planet by Galaxy Trail, and this is their debut game. I mean, obviously the creator has done other other games in the past, but they weren't really like bigger commercial. They're just silly stuff. But anyway, let's get started. So, so well, hello everyone. Uh, here supporting Trey on commentary. I am Revolution. I also a runner of this game. So well, whenever you're ready, you can do the countdown, Trey. Okay, sure. Thanks. Right, classic. All right, three. Two, one, blast off. Okay, here we go. So this is Freedom Planet, and it's a, this is a game with three characters, three playable characters. Actually, in the beginning of the game, you have only two that are Lilac and Carol, and then Mila is a character you can unlock uh, later in the game. But three categories are actually pretty different. <laughs> um, as you can see, the game is... Oh, oh shit, no. God. <laughs> game is aesthetically very similar to Sonic, but um, also some things are very similar, like slopes, uh, slow momentums, and uh, some movements even look similar. But actually, oh, no. uh, some physics are really different as well. Uh, the main uh, tech for Carol is uh, getting a bike because she's like really slow on foot. Uh, it's a little lame that a character needs a power up to actually be decent at running, but actually she's uh, very okay with bike, and in some sections actually considerably faster than the other two. Just in a few sections, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Carol is overall the slowest character, but she has a really, really good uh, fighting style. So now the first level, Drown Valley, is a level that is plenty of a lot of. Well, uh, we have that switch, uh, that gate that uh, you have to push the block. Actually, you can skip that as Lilac. As Mila, you don't even play this level because uh, Mila has a different starter level. Uh, because, as I said, it's a character you unlock later in the story. So, in the story, she starts elsewhere, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, the first mid boss is a snake. Uh, you have to hit all the orbs and then the head, and that's all. Uh, as you can see, the strat is very fancy. Uh, Carol has a lot of fighting movements. Um, normally, she's better on foot for fighting, but for very specific fights, she actually is better on the bike. This is one of them, because you can actually perform a bike boost and then a white claw, which is actually considerably efficient because you can reset your claws very quickly that way if you are close to a wall or if your target is in a specific height. So that's actually really handy. Now the bridge skip is one of the most Oops. Uh, inconsistent tricks, I guess. But actually it went pretty well, second try. That's really smooth. Probably I'm a little delayed by the way. <laughs> are you right heading the boss skip? I'm doing the boss skip, yeah. One, yeah, nice. two, three, four. Yeah, that was a really, really smooth zoom mount right in the end. The physics in the game are really speed friendly, so this is a game I will totally recommend to speedrun. Um, the boss keep is like uh, there is a, there was a boss here, and a couple of years ago was found that you can actually go that upper path and skip the boss, but the game was soft locking if you did that, so the dev actually helped us and he added the stage clear flag on it, so that's actually really good. Oh, I went to press down. <laughs> so, well, the thing about really makes the second level in the game no bike. is that, well, yeah, basically you don't have a bike. Uh, something fun about Relic Maze and Drown Valley, all the sections we're playing right now, is that actually there was found uh, for a more purist any percent point of view that you can actually skip bot levels by, you know, um, something glitchy in a cutscene that makes you completely skip entirely the first two stages. 
still we split the categories in classic mode and adventure mode because of that, and it's more like a matter of I don't know uh, taste of the runner. Which one won the run? It's not like uh, mandatory. If you want to be totally pissed about any percent, uh, Adventure Mode is the category for Carol since skipping two entire levels, as you can guess, is a lot of time save. <laughs> but um, it's. For some other run, it's like. Um, Friendly Mace and Drawback have a lot of really fun text. So it's actually a little lame skip the, those levels. Really makes you have one that is probably the second easiest sip in the game, that is uh, that one in the yellow room. When you enter in the yellow room, um, basically it's something related with flags in the game. If you sip up there, uh, as you can see, you uh, Carol passes through um, those purple blocks that are actually uh, solid, usually, and that is related with the sip, it's because the flag never... <laughs> Never happened. I don't know how to explain that. So, well, there is a mid boss here that is a claw that is stealing our kingdom stone. Um, actually, you can skip this as a slylack, but as Carol, actually, you can't. So, you have to fight the claw. It's like um, four or five hits, depending on which attack you use. And then you have this button. And here we go. The first half of early misses already done. There is a Rift Warp here, actually faster also in time, also RTA, uh, which is actually important clarification because on this game we actually measure the um, little boss by in-game time, which is actually interesting, particularly in this level, uh, because there are some cutscenes on things that are skipped or the time is frozen or you can get some bonuses by freezing the timer. So the second half in Relic Mist is actually a very fun spot to place. <laughs> did something spicy. Reading in the chat there, uh, it has a hard final boss, I don't know. How do you feel about Brown 3? <laughs> I mean, Brown 3 is actually not that bad. <laughs> Yo, nice! You're, you're going for some actually really risky threat there. You almost got crashed there. <laughs> That is a threat that actually is very reliable for Carol. Um, for red characters, it's a little uh, more risky because of the instant speed Carol can get. Probably Carol isn't the fastest character, but it's the character with um, more. Oh. That is, it's the easiest character to build instant speed. Oh, that right. is uh, so far the her timer. advantage. Uh. The timer. It's a thing. Okay. After Relic Maze, right? Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so basically, in this section, you have a Crusher Room and the Bone Golem Room. You need to clip both of them to get in the final section of the stage, which is a little... Um, I mean, we have... In the, in the task formula, we can actually skip this section, and it had a lot of theories about how to skip this section, but, well, we couldn't make it, <laughs> unfortunately. So here it is, uh, one of the my favorite level um, bosses, that is Mantali, the boss in Relic Maze. You can actually extend the cutscene uh, and save a lot of in-game time in the first and the second phase, but that is actually really difficult. So basically, if you can kill both arms and hit the head before uh, ti the timer is back, then just uh, make the timer to stay frozen for a while. And that is a real lot of time, so it's like uh, 7 seconds in game time for the first phase and a little more actually for the second. It's more like uh, 15 seconds saved in total. Yeah, that is, uh, as Edgy Raven says in the chat, uh, that is what we call timer freeze because, well, timer is freezing, so... Oh, right, the timer. Oh, right. Right. Do we have a minute what for a quick there? donation? Yeah, for sure. We have a $10 donation from Karen who says, Go Valkyries! I've been able to peek in and out at moments of the series, and you are doing great. Yeah, thank you very much. So, well, um, 
that was a really clean mantelist. Uh, Seb says in the chat. Actually, very good. Just, uh, Timer Freeze was not there, but that is my only complaint. Actually, very That's controlled. Really very good. Nice. I've been trying to practice it, but it's like, yeah. Okay, well, I think I know- Well, it's a bust. You never finish practicing. I think I know how I broke the timer. I think it's because I put it a bit off screen mm -hmm. on my, uh, screen. Sorry about that. I didn't know that would happen. Oh, it resets. Okay. <laughs> Well, things happen. It shouldn't be that work. short though, either way. I think it's because of my tiny laptop screen. It's just like, I put it out of view so I can have more real estate and now it's just, it's not wanting to cooperate. Yeah, don't worry about that. I don't have things time to happen. fix it, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, you keep focus on running. By the way, this is for tonight, the third level, which is the first one in Adventure Mode. <laughs> And it's a level with a very particular tech that actually um, with the other characters you can explode more, that is the wrong works. At the end of certain screens you can actually um, enter the loading zone and then go backwards. And if you do that, you actually start in the next screen in a later checkpoint that is actually not even the natural checkpoint of the screen. It's uh, the first checkpoint coordinates in the second screen and the second screen checkpoint coordinates in the third screen and here we go the wrong reward you have two of them for the other characters and unfortunately we have only one for Carol then uh, we have this mid boss that is a samurai puncher which is a good dummy for training your white clouds this is so far the most efficient uh, method for fighting for Carol that is uh, spamming and and chaining combos of white clouds White Claws are a really powerful movement, so you want to deal as much as possible there. So now entering the mode, we have another new deck that is zip lines. So we have a zip lines there that give us a special momentum. The first zip line actually gave us uh, the maximum possible speed in the game. Um, wonder what happened there. <laughs> I heard something, but I'm yeah. probably with a delay. You find out. <laughs> I eventually find out. Ooh. Oh, don't tell me. Yes. Yes. That second zip line actually, the angles in the zip lines are really important. And, and stuff can happen there. So, well, <laughs> you have to recover quickly if something goes wrong. Um, that was a really smooth second screen intro, by the way. So, basically, you have those jump pads that are wow. specific uh, items for Carol. Wow, you're, you're going some really good good stuff today, by the way. It's been a bit bipolar. <laughs> now the samurai second second try. That was a really good kill. I can I can tell what uh, what what was that reaction before. Yeah, uh, that was a new route. Um, not at all, but it's not the two years ago route. <laughs> Now Robo Panda, that is a boss uh, heavily based on RNG. Actually, this game doesn't have much RNG, but this boss is actually the big exception, probably the biggest um, impact of RNG in the run. For Carol, basically, uh, it's all the fact that you have to fight it on the bike. There's no way you can actually, uh, at least not this core for now. Um, how to fight this without bike, we can do that uh, using mods and actually the fight with without bike is like 15 seconds faster but unfortunately the game forced you to start this fight with bike by the way that is a really good fight uh, what Trey is doing in some point in some parts of this fight is actually um, waiting for Panther to perform some movements so basically the objective is uh, keeping Panther down as much as possible. If you kill the third phase before uh, the third uh, bullet salvo round, uh, basically it goes up earlier in the fight, so she tried to prevent that. Did I mess up the screen? Oh, by the way, did you know you can actually do that before Panther? Oh no, wait, you mean that? No, it's okay, it's okay. I can see you clearly now. Yeah, you're fine, and also I just wanted to mention the timer is fine on stream now as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. So now into Skevatalion. Skevatalion is a character. It's um, 
level bar uh, particularly not designer for Carol. <laughs> uh, there is a funny thing about Sky Battalion. Uh, as you can see, metal, the, you can enter in the three ships in different order. There are three ships and you can do whatever you want with that. But for Carol in the speed run, logically, the metal ship is the first one. Why? Because it's the only one with the bike. Because yes, there is only one bike in this stage. <laughs> and also, as you can see, those uh, cute DNA cannons. Basically, if you get caught by the one of them, your bike is gone. So, <laughs> you wanna actually take care of your only bike in the... So, now... That was really small. You have been practicing that trick, right? Yeah, I've because been Because that was a really good yeah. DNA cannon stare. Nice, nice. So, basically, that is one of the biggest memes of Carol. In Sky Battalion, you have one bike. And immediately after you get oh that God. bike, you have a Spaghetti. completed section with three DNA. Oh no! Oh man. What a weird place to oh, lose my bike. Wonder what happened. Uh, okay, Fire Ship is a ship with a lot of danger for the bike. I'm gonna anticipate that because actually I hear a lot. Oh. Yeah, I know, that was right? really unfortunate. Well. You can you have the honor of actually watching now how Carol Bikeless is. There is an actual category for Carol Bikeless, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to Abikayelov, one legendary Carol runner that holds the impossible world record of that category. <laughs> hey, still you're very good at some bike bikeless threats. I actually did practice a bit of Carol Bikeless ages ago. <laughs> It's always good having backups, because the uh, thing about this run is that you want to not lose the bike. About how you lose the bike, be be uh, I kind of skipped on explaining that. Basically, when you hold the bike, you can get uh, up to three hits. The third hit uh, kills your bike. On the screen, once you enter a new screen or take a new gas can, um, basically, the you reset the bike health. So, well, it's actually always good having practice uh, bikeless strats just in case, especially for Marathon Showcase. Honestly, if you are grinding for a PvE in certain level, if you lose the bike, it's instantly reset. <laughs> but not sure about how much, honestly. I don't know. Probably it's uh, completely up to the runner. Because in some section, actually, you can lose uh, a lot of time, but in some others, not really much by losing the bike. It depends a lot. It's truly really important for a Carol runner knowing where the gas cans are, just in case. That's for sure. So now the third boss. Uh, in Sky Battalion, you have to kill every mini boss to actually <laughs> um, unlock the flag for the ship complete. Which is actually fun, it's not just uh, reaching a coordinate, it's actually killing the bosses. As well as you can actually just fly under the ships onto the checkpoints and kill the bosses, but it's completely mandatory to kill the bosses. Oh, that, that was a fun way to actually lose the shield. So basically it's you nice can switch. actually die. Yeah, you can actually die and trigger the transition at the same time and that happens. The game keeps going on, you just lose the shield or... Actually, the bike, if that happens if you're on the bike. So now daily is a really simple boss. To understand, it's just um, a peacock and you have to kill all the feathers and then the main body. Uh, five face repeating the same, so actually it's a nice moment for donations if there is any. Uh, we don't have any more donations currently, but I do just want to take a second to quickly remind uh, our viewers of a couple upcoming uh, goals that we are. So uh, we have Super Mario RPG Randomizer coming up tonight. Uh, include Kulex's Lair in the Star Shuffle is currently at 134 out of $200. Uh, do Booster's Curtain Minigame, which is... I mean, we have to get that one. That's like my favorite part of Super Mario RPG. Uh, that's only at 10 out of $100. Uh, and then we also have the Ignition Factor Oops. later tonight. And there is an incentive to play the Secret Level, which is at 30 out of $100. OK, then. That sounds really interesting, by the way. So, well, now 
back to Freedom Planet and back, uh, back to Carol, we have Jake Creek. That is a level that is very particular because you actually start on the bike. It's a level that you actually have a bike all the time, but in the boss fight, for some efficiency reasons, you prefer to actually get rid of it. But for now, we'll have bike all the levels, so actually that's really nice. Jake Creek has something special that is... Um, blow cycles that is not affecting much Carol except you're grinding for the IL record I think <laughs> because actually I started to care about uh, global cycles when I was grinding for sub 3 this low I I'm particularly feel proud about my IL on this one so well Trey's actually uh, having a really smooth jig rig right now so when you go underwater actually it's not the best for Carol but is not that bad at all. You can take those flowers and keep your momentum down. And there are a lot of uh, really cool strats on these stages. You can mount the ceiling to skip entire this section. Uh, the intended, the, the dev intended way to actually kill the screen is going back and forth, but it's way easier if we just skip. Now for the third screen. Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> There are a lot of ceiling mounts on these stages, uh, as you can see. Actually, a really nice calculation. Now, look skip, maybe? No, not this time, okay. The, you can actually kinda skip the loop, it's a minimal time save. Now, the mid boss on this stage, Nira, is uh, really complicated because you have to hit her and take care of the knockback. And if you fail at killing a face in time, uh, she gets a shield, which, oh, she did. Well, basically, if she gets a shield, it's a lot of time lost, but oh, no. actually, that was not that bad. It could have been a lot worse. Oh no! Okay, now getting into the submarine. The submarine is actually a really fun section with our character, which Carol is just okay. But with our characters, you get, uh, you build a lot of really crazy speed. Oh, that. Okay, it's it's okay. We can, you can just keep going. So, well, what happened there was just failing at getting the main route, but honestly, as long as you don't stop heavily, it's not a major time loss. Now, the last sprint in the submarine, and now we can see Nier again, which is, she is now freezing herself because she didn't realize that casting the freezing spell underwater will cause that. Now... <clears throat> The last section of the stage and getting to the boss fight, which is one of the most complicated boss fights for Carol, if not the hardest, to be honest. Ah. On this fight, uh, you have to actually... Do you remember when I said in Drone Body the um, bike and claw deck was useful in some certain places? Well, this fight is one of those places. You can keep Serpentine... Um, from completely stunned on the wall by spamming those. It's a really hard strat to perform optionally. And well, Trey lost the bike there, but after that you have a chopper. For the chopper you need to get really good air cloud combos. Something fun about this is that when you don't lose the bike in the fight, uh, you actually have to drop the, the bike somewhere, and it's very usual to actually land in the bike by accident. Still, that was a really smooth chopper, by the way. If you get the bike by accident in one of the last chopper phases, probably it's always better uh, just finishing the fight on the bike and not dismounting and doing all the run again to get the chopper with close. So heading now to Trap Hideout. Trap Hideout is level with, as you can see, a lot of cycles. We have these lasers in the beginning you that are really them. annoying. Yeah, that is the thing. You can't actually cross through them. You can't damage boost them. Um, if you get damaged by them, you get stopped and stuck in the position of the laser. So that is the thing because you can't damage boost, so you have to actually wait for them. In some point, it's healthy that we don't have a bike to take care of <laughs> here, because actually you will lose it immediately by only one hit of the lasers. Now there is a first mid boss that is this kind of bat. Uh, actually, it went really smoothly. 
And now for the second screen, we have a in-game time strat that is restarting because for some reason in track hideout, if you restart, uh, you don't have your input slot, so you can move before the timer is back. So just save a couple seconds by doing that. There is only one bike in the first half of track hideout that is going the top route in the second screen. Um, this, that is the only bike in the first half of Trap Hell, then you have like, I don't know, billions of bikes in the second half. <laughs> so, the third screen intro actually is one of my favorite parts in the LoL. You go vertically and this is one of the places where Carol movement actually shines, because uh, her biggest um, advantage is actually... Oh, that was really neat. It's actually going uh, vertically on walls. That is where she's totally faster than the other two. Now, this mid boss, that is a little annoying, but actually went very smoothly, I can say. Now, for the second half, as you can see, there are gas cans everywhere. <laughs> Which is hilarious, because uh, now is probably the place with um, smaller chances of losing the bike, but it was just that section. Now, if you lose the bike, you're screwed. There is not anymore until Spade. <laughs> Spade is the boss of this station. There is a particular threat for killing him. Probably for Taz, would be faster just fighting him directly. But we are not Taz, and we prefer to actually pre kill him. The hitbox is up there, so you can actually uh, hit him before the fight. Now you have to deal with the 99 ninjas, and when they're gone, Spade is going to show up. With the damage already done from those hits uh, Treya was uh, dealing up there, something important about that is that you don't want to overkill Spade. If you actually kill Spade, uh, he becomes invulnerable, and it's basically a soft lock. I almost so... PB'd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's nice, actually. Really nice. Almost sub 3, by the way. That was a really good... Really good uh, need trap out. I'm gonna try... The yeah, the ninja... The ninja strat is actually new. Yeah, I'm gonna try the barrel zip twice, and if I fail it... Twice in a row, I'm just gonna do the regular. Hey, Nacho Threats! Okay, shoutouts to Nacho, another girl runner. He also that. hates Thermal Base. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> he hates Thermal Base, so of course the shoutout for him is right now. Thermal Base is a level uh, based obnoxiously cycle based, like most of the game, but Thermal Base is very particular. And we have a couple important skips. The yes. first one is very annoying, I can't spoil, I uh, just spoil that you got it. But yeah, you need a very particular position for the barrels to enter in the good one. Ah, oh, you got the second try, I guess. Yeah. Good, good, good. So, this is actually really heavy muscle memory basil, and it's uh, really awkward to get in an important pace. There is something interesting about this. If you play as Lilac, if, starting by a uh, formula, better, it's better. If you play as Mila, you don't even go there. You <laughs> go out of fancy in the beginning of the screen. Now, <laughs> going to Lilac. If you play as Lilac, you have two barrels you can sift through. So, you have like uh, three seconds lost for a little more for every attempt. But for Kael, you only can take the big barrel. So, that is seven seconds <laughs> for each cycle you lose. So, if you're grinding for a PB, you really want to not fail this. <laughs> And now the easiest sip in the game, you just uh, hit the box three times and you get in the top. It's so easy. It's the easiest sip in the free. game. You can try that at home and nothing bad is gonna happen, I swear. Now for the third screen, we have a mini boss that is Squill. It's holding a um, key card and it's important to kill it. But a very important thing is also going upper route. Oops. But not just because of efficiency purpose, it's because if you go for a, a lower route, there are a couple troopers following you, and if you get in the mid boss, the, follow the troopers are gonna follow you, and you'll have a really hard time in the mid boss. <laughs> this mid boss is probably the one with biggest health in the game, it's really a tall guy, and uh, you need a lot of damage for killing him. 
the second phase now is just a couple claws and it's gone, but the first phase is really, really heavy. It's like actually more hell than Brevon needs, uh, or Serpentine, or any other boss in the game. So, well, after the first uh, half of Thermal Base is done, we have a bike, which is actually really good. This level with bike is actually um, particularly faster than other characters even, uh, because we can skip a lot of sections, or the others can't, just because having the vertical possibilities the bike gave us. So now it's uh, one of the easiest, I would say, nah, not, not at all, but there is another skip that is a little less noticeable, but is very important, and it's the water current skip. So basically, you boost against the current and just keep um, going for... Well, there are some switches for lowering the water level, and you don't need them if you just keep that. So now, going through the water streams and getting the keycard. These crushes are uh, really scary, because they are an instant kill if they touch one pixel of you, so <laughs> you wanna take care of not hitting them. So now the elevator skip, which is basically mount the, the wall and just go up. And now the boss in the stage, Syntax, which is actually a really... Uh, it's like an auto-scroller fight or something. It's like you kill every face and just wait. So it's an actually good moment for donations if there is any. Yeah, that's perfect. We do actually have a donation from Kinda Nerdy Housewife uh, donating $1 saying, Naming a party member after my favorite dead meme, Doge. Such speedrun. Much donate. So take this. Wow. Uh, and just to uh, update that bid war really quickly, that is for Final Fantasy uh, Legend 2. Uh, name the other party members. Four characters in the name, top three will be taken. We now have Doge with $1 and Honk with $1, so there is another name available. That syntax is really sloppy. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty cool. Actually, something funny is that this boss is really good for reading donations, <clears throat> but what comes next is it's actually also good even to read better. Donations. <laughs> yeah, because now we have a shmup that is an auto scroller. So you just smash between two buttons to win. That's that's yeah, level. Uh, and for some reason, I, it doesn't count towards your in game time. Yeah, basically you can die and game over three, four, five times here, and it's not affecting your time, <laughs> so... Well, we don't have any more donations right now, but I'm really curious about this game, um, because I read a little bit about it, and it's kind of like an offshoot of the Sonic universe, and I'm kind of curious um, how, like, do you also enjoy speedrunning Sonic games, or how do the communities kind of overlap with each other that way? I think there's like there's a few people who run Sonic who also run this game, but not many. I actually, when I started speedrunning, I did Sonic Advance 3, but it was a really long time ago, back in 2006, and I was just kids. I didn't have a recording. And then like, I dabbled a bit in Sonic Rush, but I haven't actually gone back to those games. I don't know, maybe one day. Well, actually there is a kind of interesting link on Sonic Runners and Freedom Planet Runners since it's a really aesthetically similar game but actually a lot of the people who started running uh, Freedom Planet first were, were mostly Sonic Run. I recall G-Pro, Juki, Critical Seal and a lot of guys playing Freedom Planet when it was a new game and most of them are totally Sonic Runners so yeah there is a, a very close bond with Sonic Runners for sure I'm, I'm the That's not neat, Sonic yeah. Like, I run games that are like Sonic, but they're not. I just suspect there's a lot of people who are seeing this game for the first time and going, Oh wow, this looks a lot like a Sonic game in a lot of ways. Yeah, in a lot of ways it, it looks really... It's a particular experience, but it's real similar uh, to Sonic in some point. World's most awkwardly placed bike. 
Yeah, that is something fun about Bad Glacier. So, Bad Glacier is a level that is uh, the longest stage in the run for most characters. For Kill is um, barely. <clears throat> in terms of. Um, wow, that was freeze mode. In terms of in game time, it's the longer stage, but in RTA, I'm not sure at all because of Relic Maze. <laughs> but it's a level that you have your first bike really <laughs> interestingly placed. <laughs> But, well, we managed to actually get it now, so we're fine. So... <laughs> the only one game I get, uh, away from being a Sonic Runner, I know. <laughs> so, well, uh, now in Battle Glacier, it's really important to not lose the bike, because after the first screen, you have only one bike in the second screen that is out of the route, and after that, you don't have any other bike until close uh, near the end of the level, so it's really important to actually take care of it. A good way to actually take care of the bike is uh, keeping all the time a shield active, because of course if you have a shield, the bike hits are not... Uh, every hit you, you get, it's like, I mean, you get hit on the shield, not on the bike. Well, these drills are kinda interesting because in some points you feel like you who are going to hit one block and you hit the other one. Now there's uh, the classic spot with drill drills. There's a really small strat uh, Trey tried to get there, but it's actually very hard, so still very well reacted there. And now the mid boss, which is the, as I said always, the casual nightmare, because Absolution is a really punishing boss. In this case, this guy is not uh, health, it's more like one hit uh, per phase. You have to hit it uh, 14 times uh, to beat this boss. It doesn't matter how much damage to deal. And it's the hard part about this boss is that it's true that you can control his movement and that's stress mode, but on the other hand, if you get hit by him, uh, you get a lot of damage and also a really huge knockback. So you want to take care of it. I'm not doing the zip. I'm not doing the zip. You're not going the zip. Oh, okay. There is a zip here that keeps now these platforms. Um, you go up, so basically you just keep this mini boss fight. This is Sparky. Uh, Sparky is a fun guy, by the way. You can do a lot of really fun stuff uh, playing as Mila with him. The, the classic way to oh, get rid of. <clears throat> of this section is uh, killing Sparky, so you unlock the path. Normally we zip through that in other conditions. But it's a hard skip because it Sorry, has a... <laughs> <laughs> Dinner's ready. Well, the thing is that you can get soft lock, friend, that's it. If you get soft lock, you have to restart the game. And if you restart, you lose the bike. So basically it's a lot of time loss if you fail. And the pixel for getting uh, the window is only one pixel for getting the strat, so... And you can tell why some runners uh, rather to not go. It's kinda uh, easy to set up queues, but you can mm, spend a lot of time for actually getting on the pixel, uh, besides just checking and confirming the position, so actually... In some situations, it's very understandable if anyone is uh, deciding to not. So now, do you remember the Spider and Dragon Valley? Well, it's back. And I can tell that because this is not Adventure Mode. <laughs> Nacho always uh, points out he runs Adventure Mode mostly in Marathon. And he always says, I will say the Spider is back, but it's not back. It's the first time showing up. So now there is a really awful section with a lot of drills, but we can skip it. Which is actually really nice for Carol. And now getting into the boss fight, Dale. Which is actually a really good boss for Carol, but at the same time it's very... Uh, there is a cutscene, and during the cutscene you can actually get, uh, kill some hits. Uh, the damage you deal on Dale is uh, per hit, the same way as Absolution. is one hit for the sh uh, two hits for the shield, and one hit for him. Seven phases in total. So the strat is basically keeping on him and jumping, attacking, double jumping, and attacking again. So you can get rid of the three hits in the same jump. 
that's the most efficient way. Ah, uh, nice. Very, very good by the glacier. Very, actually, very good for Cipless, to be honest. So, well, that was actually a really small tail. Free donations. <laughs> Well, it might be a good time because this cutscene is very long. We don't have any donations right now, but let me just remind everybody that you're currently watching Speedrun Ragnarok, and we're proud to benefit Take This again this year. Take This is a mental health nonprofit and is to inform the gaming community about mental health issues, provide education on different disorders and prevention techniques, and reduce the overall stigma around mental health or mental illness. Uh, if you'd like any more information, please visit takethis.org. Okay, thank you very much. Now, getting on the last section of the page, someone in the chat actually pointing out something fun about Battle Glacier Cutsin. When you hold a, a shield with whatever character that is not Lilac, for some reason, after the cutscene, you can see Lilac with the shield. <laughs> it's just a visual thing because, as you can see, Carol started the stage with the shield. But very hilarious. FD1 is a really fun level, fa very fast, very friendly. Um, you have your bike around 37 seconds. Actually, more like 36. Yeah, more like 36. And after that, uh, that is the only bike, so you want to take care of it. Actually, there is an early bike in another route, but it's actually faster just ignoring it. So, Final Dragonaut uh, was initially planned as being one on one big level, but the dev actually decided to change it to uh, to split it in four. So, this is basically the last level already, but at the same time, it's the first of the four last levels, more accurately. So, this is uh, an, one of the new techs, uh, the teleporters. You can. Well, it's very messy first uh, learning the positions for all of them some fancy strat there losing the bike in purpose because actually it's very important uh, dropping the bike here some other strat is just dismounting before the boss fight but definitely you want to be on foot for this boss fight because uh, you need white gloves and once you enter on this boss fight with the bike you can't actually dismount again in fights like this if you get hit more than three times doesn't matter you never lose the bike and that was uh, very smooth, everyone. Sub 2 in the marathon is actually very good. Nobody likes this level. Hey, actually, I can tell a lot of people likes FT2. FT2 is a very particular level, uh, very significant, particularly for Lilac. Uh, but also for Mila, is a uh, level with a lot of gimmicks. For Carol, it's like a lot less pressure because the biggest keep in the game is not here for air. At least not in RTA runs. In Taz, you can red box. That is this little box you can see. Uh, there is a way you can use it to skip like 45 seconds of the stage. But well, for Carol, I mean, I, I did Taz that, and no way. That is like a consecution of. Uh, it's a lot of frames perfect, I don't know, <laughs> it's a really hard and some pixel basis. So even if you are able to perform the same inputs for like the 15 frames you need for that, also actually more than 15 what I'm saying, it's more like 30, 35 frames. <laughs> well, if you manage to do that, anyways you can actually not get it because of some pixels, so it's really dumb to get, it's like no way, so we kinda ignore it in runs, at least for now. Do I have time for a quick donation? Sure. Sure, go ahead. So we have a $10 donation from Zello, uh, and they say, Mallow is love, Mallow is life, Mallow is now. Good luck to all the runners, and thank you for to all the staff for supporting a great cause. Uh, and that donation went towards Mallow being the starting character uh, in the Super Mario RPG randomizer uh, exhibition later on this evening. Yeah, nice. 
Thank you very much there. And now on the second screen of 52, we have uh, some particular te uh, tech that is the lack of oxygen. So Brevon basically says um, we don't need oxygen, so he's cutting totally the, the oxygen. So we can actually... Oh, that was really sweet. Well, we can take the water shield and ha by having the water shield, we don't have issues with the oxygen, but we have to take care of it. Anyway, since this is casual difficulty, you have some bubbles you can use to recover your your oxygen, which is actually um, very useful uh, in the run if you're playing casual. There is the thing about the difficulties. In the past, for some reason, normal and hardware mandatory, you were not able to play on easy or, or casual, but now we can, actually. And hey, that was a really smooth tip. So basically we realized that there was no reason to ban the fast thing and oh god it's too bad you were having a really good FD2 by the way everything was going so smoothly and you had to fall there such a shame now climbing the last elevator and skipping the cutscene and fighting Giga Serpent do you remember Stephanie right well now he's a monster and we have to take care about not falling in the pit while fighting him so it's important to take care about the knockbacks so in this fight is basically dealing as much damage as possible the last phase is a little bit taller um, and here we go so now we're reaching the end almost almost there by the way not important at all but you reset the timer again <laughs> Doing serpenting fight. That's all I'm not important at this rate. FD3 is another super uh, fast friendly stage. It's actually one of the levels where Carol is closer with the other characters in terms of time. Well, by the other characters, I say Lilac because Mila doesn't even have a boss fight here. You'll realize why later. So basically, we have a lot of. Uh, bikes and in the level, but they're like FD1, they're particularly strategically placed. Good thing we had uh, an early one there, just close. So, actually, when I mentioned before, in some points, it's not really important when you lose the bike. This is one good example if you lose the bike uh, so close from other bike, it doesn't matter at all, it's just a minor time. So now going the upper route to get the, well, to not get the fire shield, who needs the fire shield anyways. Uh, that fire shield is more like it's on the way, actually it's not really mandatory to get. Now the hallway, for the hallway the strat for Carol is just uh, spamming boost jumps because if you just uh, run straight, you're gonna be stopped by hit lag here, so because you are hitting your enemies with the bike, so it's actually faster just jumping all the time. Now getting in the part with all the speed pads, uh, that went smoothly, we need that. So the entering the last section of the tree, which is actually really good, really fun to and getting in the boss fight, so this is a long cutscene, there is any... Yeah, this is a, if this is a good time for a donation, we have another $5 donation that just came in from Prof Ness, who says, just to round out the meme party for Final Fantasy Legend 2, Jeff, uh, so our we do have a full party at the moment. Uh, Jeff, Doge, and uh, Honk are our three party members that will be joining us at $5, $1, and $1 respectively. So if you would like to bump one of those three names, uh, get those donations in. Okay, thank you very much. So, well, now the boss fight. This is Mila, and this is a off fight because actually it's a really awkward fight for the hitboxes since Mila flies way too high. Every time you kill a face, uh, Mila starts uh, going high and shooting from while, while she's flying, so actually that's really annoying. <laughs> and also, we have a bike in the middle of the battlefield, so <laughs> it's actually really annoying landing on the bike. Not a very when good what boss, we right? want is to fight. 
Well, I, I can't tell I actually remember Mila being there before. She went almost all the time, so I wonder if you can actually direct her and make her <laughs> soft lock the game. <laughs> Something fun about this game is that in certain places, when you have some enemies moving left and right, back and forth, uh, you can actually derail them by spawning pauses. Oh, nice! This cutscene. And um, also, this cutscene, you can do a lot of silly stuff. Like messing around with the camera, making Carol appear from nowhere. Same goes for Lilac. Uh, you can do a lot of really <laughs> silly things on this cutscene, which is supposed to be the most dramatic moment on the Rumble. So uh, now FD4, the last level in the game, which is a heavily cycle basil. We have uh, a really stupid uh, double subpixel basil zip in the very beginning of the stage, which has uh, really low odds of working. So Treya decided to not go for them, which is fine. <laughs> Honestly, um, particularly because the Carol version of it is uh, particularly hardcore, to be honest. <laughs> so we're gonna use just the normal sip. That is a lot way more reliable. And here we go. Now going down all the way and then heading up to the laser room. So basically, if you get dreadlocks, that is the first sip, you get all the bounce, and actually you can mash bounces for like. I don't know, a lot of seconds. <laughs> and that is pretty annoying. Oh, wonder what happened there. Probably some laser issues, I guess. So yeah, and in, in this place, if since we're playing in casual, we can actually take some damage from the laser, but to be honest... Uh, oh, I know what happened there. <laughs> well... To, uh, to be honest, that is uh, in hard or normal, if you get caught by the laser, that is an instant death. So you want to actually take care of it. So now that's something interesting that Treya actually used the fire shield. The ultra there was using the metal shield that makes you invulnerable to spikes to claim up in the spike wall. But actually she used the fire shield and the only difference is that she decided to use the fire shield so use of the iframes to climb and ma barely made it. Yeah, there's a weird thing with like, if you get hurt, destroyed the shield with the spikes and you still go on it, the spikes don't seem to hurt you. I found that out by accident. Yeah, that's actually pretty smart, honestly. <laughs> I was just taking a damage boost there because, well, I changed completely the strat there <laughs> on, on my runs. But that is very efficient as well. Since also in casual you have another extra hit for the shield, you ho in normal ha uh, you have two hits for the shield and in casual you have three, so actually that gives you way more eye, uh, eye frames. Also eye frames are longer in casual. So now the boss, uh, the first phase is as you can as you already saw it was the same as Absolution, the ship in Battle Glacier, but in a stronger and at the same time weaker version. Now the second version, the second phase is uh, this kind of mecha, and he's already dead. So now going for round three. So time is when uh, the last hit of Raymond, which you can see the health is gone. So be prepared for that. Now fighting him. Uh, okay, another then. extra cycle. Actually, the quick kill on Brevon is kind of hard for Carol. You need to be extremely efficient for time. You need to be efficient for... Extremely efficient for... Well, close to get it. Oh, I actually made the personal best. <laughs> hmm. In Marathon. Oh. That's what we like to see. What was the... I, I, I'm still a little delayed. What was your final game time? Well, we'll find out. Game okay, plus... we'll find out. Yeah, let's see. So, well, the final cutscene. We can see how the ship is destroyed. Mila is still dead. There um... we go, 42-47. Yeah. Yo, nice. <clears throat> Big GG for you. Yeah, I got personal passage. <laughs> <laughs> Feels nice having a PB. Congratulations, right? And I get to pop someone on the leaderboard as well. 
Yeah, nice. I'm with my commentary on it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing this really interesting, cool uh, game with us uh, as part of the marathon today. No problem. Oh, thank you very much for inviting us, um, for accepting the game. Personally, I really love this game and I always like when it has some recognition or it's um, selected for being exhibit. So, thank you very much. And, well, not sure if you have something more to add, right? Uh, shout out for the speedrun community uh, putting up with all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you do you actually help a lot the community as well? So I do? thank you very much for being part of it. You do, yeah, you do. In what way? <laughs> um, a lot of new runners are showing up, and you actually give a lot of assist. Ah, oh, fair enough. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I'll make this to another marathon. Get even better time. You know, maybe maybe <laughs> UKSG. Alright. See ya. Alright. Well, thank you very much and see ya. Alright. Well, thank you again for that uh, fantastic run, Treya. And uh, thank you for the great commentary as well there, Revolution. Uh, that was really fun to watch. Uh, my name is Moonblaze Wolf. You can call me Blaze. Uh, I'm your host for this segment of the marathon. Uh, and I just want to take a second uh, to remind everybody well, why we're here. Uh, we are currently raising money for Take This. Uh, Take This is a mental health nonprofit, and their main mission is to inform the gaming community about mental health issues, provide education on different disorders and prevention techniques, and reduce the overall stigma around mental illness. Uh, they also reach out to gaming communities to help them promote healthier and more productive work environments and ensure they have methods in place for helping employees who suffer from mental illness. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, uh, and if you want any more information, please visit takethis.org. Uh, we are currently at $4,046 out of $5,000 that we are hoping to raise this week. So thank you so much, everybody, for that. We are off to an incredible start already in the marathon. Uh, it goes all through Saturday, so we got a long, long way to go still. Uh, up next, we are going to have... A, I don't, I don't want to call it a bonus run, but it is uh, not on the original schedule, and I'm very excited to see this because I am a member of the Final Fantasy IV uh, free enterprise community. Uh, we are going to have a Final Fantasy IV free enterprise race between Keishura and Scala Kitty, uh, and then we'll be following that up with Final Fantasy Legend II. Uh, that is also, I believe, a race between Natara and Scala Kitty, and then Monster Rancher Hopabout by High Spirits. So uh, we do have some uh, donation incentives for Final Fantasy Legend 2. Uh, let me just take a quick look and see where those bid wars are at, because as you can see, that is coming up here pretty quickly. So our first donation incentive for Final Fantasy Legend 2 is good taste palettes versus bad taste palettes. And uh, this is going to be an interesting one. It's actually going to continue throughout at least uh, a certain portion of the run. Uh, for every $25 that is donated towards that incentive, a forced palette swap is going to happen for at least one of the runners. Uh, you get to choose between good taste and bad taste. Currently, bad taste is out to an early lead with $5 donated towards a bad taste palette swap. Uh, so if you want to lock in that bad taste palette swap, we need 20 more dollars. Uh, maybe once we get the race going, you're not going to like what you see. You'll want to flip that to good taste, uh, and that'll require another $25 donation. Uh, we also have two naming incentives for Final Fantasy Legend 2. Uh, we have a name the heroine incentive. Uh, that current leader for that is Rydia, R-Y-D-A. Uh, these are four character names, so uh, you might have to improvise a little bit. Uh, and then we can also name the other three party members uh, that will be joining our heroine on the journey. And so far we have Jeff in first place with $5. And then second and third place are Doge with $1 and Honk with $1. 
Uh, so if you would like to get a name in for the Final Fantasy Legend 2 run, you got a lot of options there. Very reasonable to get in on the action there. Uh, either the main character, which is currently sitting at a $3 lead, or uh, if you want to snag a party member, you only have to donate $2 at this point, but you know, you might want to donate a little bit more than that just to make sure. Okay. 